Hello, and welcome to session seven in this online course taking you through George Spencer Brown's Laws of Form. In this session, we'll be looking at the consequences that arise from the initials we've put together so far. The first consequence I'm going to go through in quite a bit of detail so that that will get you used to going through the rest, which we'll go through in more speedy fashion. So, we're going to use variable tokens, lowercase letters, constant form ones, marks, and the two forms of position and transposition we covered last time, and the two rules that we went through in a lot of detail in session six. So, we're also going to look at the indexing system, or use the indexing system, where C equals consequence, I initials of the primary arithmetic, J algebra for the initials of the primary algebra, and R for rule, T for theorem. Now, we've met these before. P mark, P mark over 2 is equivalent to the blank space. And transposition, say it with me, P R mark over 2, Q R mark over 2, mark over 2, equals P mark, Q mark, mark over 2, R. You can take out and put in the first expression, and you can collect and distribute the terms based on the second. We're going to call the first J1 and the second J2. Our job is to use them to prove that A mark over mark is equal to A. Now, we've been playing with that, we know it, but how do we prove it using the algebraic initials? Let's see. First of all, we're going to use J1, and we're going to replace the P term with something else. So, we're going to use A mark for each instance of the P term, and we're going to put that expression beside A mark over mark, because it's equivalent to the unmarked space, so we can put it anywhere there is a blank space. And that's the replacement and the positioning. Now we're going to use J2. P R mark over 2, Q R mark over 2, mark over 2, equals P mark Q mark mark over 2, R. We're going to transpose them. So we put the right-hand part of the expression on the left, the left-hand part of the expression on the right, and we're going to switch the two terms. We're going to take the P term and substitute the same term, A mark, for it. So there it goes. Then we're going to take the Q term and substitute a different iteration, A, for it. Here we go. We're going to copy that there. And now we're going to take the R term and substitute A mark over mark for it. And the expression now looks like this. We've got all A's in it. What does that allow us to do? Now, we know that from P1, A mark with a mark over it, A mark with a mark over that and the rest of the expression is equivalent to the unmarked state by J1. And there it is in front of us. So we can just remove it from that expression and have the left-hand side be equivalent to this new expression on the right, the reduced form. So now we know that these are equivalent. We can take that expression and realize it is equivalent to what we found by J2. Now we use J1, and in this case, we say that the P is going to be replaced by A. And we're going to expand this space and include 
j1 in it, as it appears with the a terms here. Now you'll recognize perhaps that there is an a term common to two divisions within a space. And what does that tell you? Yes. P R mark over 2, Q R mark over 2, mark over 2 equals P mark Q mark mark over 2 R. But that has A mark over mark in both spaces, so it's equivalent to J1, which reduces to a simple A. And I find this transformation magical. And all we've used is J1 and J2. Let me talk you through the sequence again, step by step, so you can see what we're doing. We used J1 and placed it in a blank space. We then moved the outer term into two equal divisions of a space. We then removed an expression that was part of it that is equivalent to a J1. Then we expanded that expression and put another instance of J1 in it. And then we moved a common term, which was within two divisions of a uh, space, to the outside. And notice that we had an expression which was equivalent to J1, so we could remove it. And we're left with the single A term. So, A mark over mark is equivalent to A. And that's demonstrated by the use of J1 and J2. In the next session, I'm going to take you through consequences 2 to 7 that are covered in Chapter 6 in a similar way. Look forward to seeing you then.